Hi guys! Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Taylor and today we're talking about dating. <laughs> So I know that on this channel I've talked a little bit about my experiences with dating and how they haven't always been great. And the common denominator in those situations are that I have been using dating apps. Um, when I was in college it was mostly Tinder, now as I've gotten older it seems like Hinge has kind of taken over as like everyone's preferred dating app. And I'm sick of it so I'm going to do something about it. So we all know that dating kind of sucks today, but why do we think that is? Is it because people truly care less about finding lasting relationships? Is everyone just using everyone as a means to an end? Or is it because of the gamification of dating apps? I think all of these questions are a little hard to answer with just a simple yes or no, besides the gamification of dating apps, because literally Match Group was sued for that. Um, but one thing I've been thinking about recently, how many dates should we realistically be going on? So I tried looking up what the average amount of dates people were going on before dating apps, but I could only find what people deemed to be the average dates per week to find a partner, and it was actually two per week. That's like a lot of time to give away. So most of us work, you know, nine to five jobs. Me personally, I work 7 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. and then, you know, I have my hobbies and all of this stuff that I do. And so two dates per week, let's say each date lasts around two hours. I mean, that's eight to 16 hours a month that are used finding what you don't want from a partner. And personally, I don't feel that we need that much time figuring out what we don't want. Are we meant to go on this many dates a week or this many dates in general? Um, also my laptop is over here so if you see me looking over here that's what I'm looking at and referring to. I just moved to the Twin Cities and while overwhelmingly I've had a better experiencing on the experience on the dating apps than when I was in South Dakota, I have found them way more over overstimulating because there are so many more people. While that isn't a bad thing, I just found myself falling into these same patterns that I'm used to when it comes to dating. Tell me how I've found multiple conservative many men in this liberal progressive city. Because I'm really getting out of my com because am I really getting out of my comfort zone if I'm letting an algorithm choose my potential matches? I guess I don't talk too politically on this channel. I am very liberal. And, you know, living in a conservative state for almost 10 years made it, like, kind of difficult for me to date. Most of the time, the men regarded me as, you know, oh, she's just so silly. You know, she just really cares about people. You know, don't mind her. That's, you know, the token liberal. And that's kind of how they treated me. And, you know, I just actually do want to be with someone who thinks at least similar to me politically and to be told that that is too much to ask for I think is like kind of rude. <laughs> I want a long-term relationship someday but I don't think I know how to go about it. I would normally just spend hours on dating apps. I would go on around four to six dates a week and eventually find someone who I would want to go on more than one date with and I just don't have that kind of time anymore and I think even more, I don't have that kind of patience. I want to be going out with my friends and doing stuff. I want to work on my small business. I want to be crocheting. I want to work on my YouTube channel. I don't have time for two to six, one to three hour dates weekly. That's just too much of my time spent on people whom I don't want to see again after first meeting. So what is my solution? Am I going to become a lonely spinster and keep adopting cats? I mean, the definition of spinster is actually someone who could make a living off of their like weaving and textile stuff so you know we're on our way with the crochet things and I do plan on adopting more cats but I want to put more effort into leaving my apartment and you know engaging in the community that I now live in. For most of my adult life I have lived in places where not a lot has been going on. Sioux Falls had some good stuff but it wasn't a lot or very often. 
Now I live in a place of abundant events and it's almost kind of hard to choose. I could do something every single week and do something different and that's exactly what I plan on doing. I have a lot of goals in life and when I sit down and think about it, at this very moment a partner is kind of low on that totem pole of goals. I want to get into a good workout routine, read my TBR, grow this channel, etc. Things I've mentioned before. Having a partner isn't super high on the list because I've noticed when I make that the center of my life it ends up just like putting me in a bad mood it just makes me feel bad scrolling through dating apps has created a level of brain rot in myself that I am still trying to get over the gamification of dating apps makes it very hard just to talk to a few people at one time when I was on Hinge, I would get sent up to like 5 to 10 likes a day, and I hate having notification symbols, so I'd go through them right away, and then try to go back to my old conversations, but then new conversations were trying to be had, and it's this vicious cycle of becoming overwhelmed with the amount of people that I'm talking to, and then I would unintentionally end up ghosting people, and then I'm the asshole, and I don't want to be that way. I don't want to be the person that swipes all the time and is a constant dating app lurker. And we all know what I'm talking about when I say that. So I've decided that I'm going to take back control of my own dating life and in a way it's going to take back control of my own time. So I'm giving myself six months to see what happens and how I feel once these six months are up. And I've laid out some guidelines as how I would like to structure things. And so let's go over that. So obviously, no dating apps. I know that there's been some discussion online where people are talking about, oh, Instagram and Facebook are becoming like dating apps. Um, but in my experience, people haven't been like reaching out to me <laughs> on those platforms. I feel like, you know, sometimes I'll get like a random guy from high school who will message me, but that's not with the intention of being my partner, if you know what I mean. Uh, I want to go to at least two events a week. And when I say events, that is like a very loose term. Um, I think event can kind of sound very like formal. So for example, they have, I, there's a card shop within walking distance of me. And last night they had Commander Night for Magic the Gathering. And I've played Magic a few times. I have a few pre-con decks. And so I went and ended up playing with a group of really nice gentlemen um they were all super super nice there were no weird vibes it was like so much fun and honestly it really helped like heal that little part inside of me that um you know had such a terrible week with men a couple weeks ago if you saw that crochet in chat it really it was like wow oh my god there's hope like i can just exist around men and not feel threatened <laughs> this is great <laughs> But so that's the kind of events I'm talking about or like knitting and crochet circles or um, you know there's also a brewery near me they had a trivia night the other night I would love to do something like that but I'm uh, yeah so things like that or I did buy tickets to a Swaco concert in October and I'm super excited to go to that so you know it it varies. So my plan for these events is to aim for like one free one and one that is under $50 each week. So that gives me a budget of around $200 a month on going out slash entertainment events. Um, and I really want to prioritize these events not revolving around drinking as much as possible. One thing that is nice about the Twin Cities is like pretty much everywhere I've gone to so far has had non-alcoholic options. And I am not sober, I still do drink, but I have been like playing around with more non-alcoholic beverages just because I've noticed as I've gotten older my stomach really hasn't been liking when I drink. Um, like I'll wake up with like a really like violent stomach ache or um, I just like don't feel good the next day and so and when I go out sometimes um, I'm not very good at just having like one. If I have one then I'm like it's time to party so that's one thing that I am but if I like don't start drinking then I don't feel that way at all so that's one thing that I'm gonna focus on is trying to do events that don't revolve around alcohol so then number three I'm going to journal about these events and update you on this channel twice a month on how things are going so I did pick out my little journal 
This is the little brown journal that I got when I went to my little cabin in the woods. I, I stopped at Walmart on my way to Hewlett, Wyoming, and I don't know why, I was just like, I feel called to have this, so I have it now. And I'm gonna use it to journal about the event time feeling about, you know, not being on dating apps because you know there is a certain sort of withdrawal to it because it is such a form of like cheap dopamine so I kind of want to talk about that and then you know all these books here we will talk about in a minute because I'm also going to you know talk about those in here so number four I want to go to events for things I'm interested in where I can meet potential partners but also meet potential friends I am in a new place and new friends who are in the same stage of life as me would be pretty nice. I am now living in a place where all of my very like good friendships from when I was a kid, everyone lives really close to me, but a lot of them are in very committed relationships. Some of them are married or going to be married and while that is so 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 amazing, that's not where I am in life right now and it would be really nice to maybe find a group of you know single girlfriends who also want to go out and just like do different things <laughs> and so you know in addition to you know wanting to take a break from the dating I also really want to use I don't want to use like an app to find friends I know that you know some people talk about like Bumble BFF and all that sort of stuff but dating apps are already kind of awkward and then imagine trying to go on like a one-on-one -on -one friend date to like meet someone new it, it's it's difficult sometimes i did go to an event last friday there's this really cool instagram page if you were in the twin cities it's called she's invited i went to a sound bath journaling and meditation event when i tell you after like the weeks of travel that i had this was like the perfect thing to like wind down i would like to go to one of their tennis groups maybe before you know it gets too cold but this was one thing I definitely want to go to more events and the sound bath meditation was a great price it was only $35 and if you know anything about you know sound baths or frequency or stuff like that I have looked into going to different circles and classes before and they can be upwards of like hundreds and hundreds of dollars so that was really cool this is like that's kind of what I want to use to meet more like female friends around the cities Friends is also a goal. Dating is not the only goal. Piggybacking off that, number five, I have set no goal of how many dates or anything. If one happens, that's super great, but if not, I'm going to reassess in six months and, you know, see, like, what I want to do then. And then number six, I know I talk about this a lot on this channel, and I have been getting better. I've been moving a lot since I moved here like I've been walking a ton and it feels super super good but I want to work out three to four times a week so I have a habit of getting into really good cycles and then things mess me up and I really want to be like done with that I want to be consistent whether or not I have something going on and why this kind of ties in with what I'm saying is because I tend to give up that workout time in favor of going on dates and I don't want to do that anymore I don't want to you know give up time bettering myself to go on dates and part of that you know is you know not doing spontaneous dates actually having like plans set forth and all this sort of stuff and you know m within myself making sure that I plan properly around those things to reiterate the goal of this is to take back my time and recenter myself in my life instead of chasing after this potential partner all of the time. I'm a big proponent of self-love and I do believe that I love myself, but am I being nice to myself by giving all of these shitty people my time? And let me tell you, it has been a lot of shitty people, not just like here, but in general. So to go along with the journaling events, I do want to, I wanted to add a little extra to this discussion and throw in a book club aspect to it. So I've picked out around five to seven-ish books from my collection that center around love and dating, and I want to read one each month and talk about it on my channel. So I technically, like I said, I have seven books, but the last two months aren't so much about date, the last two books aren't so much around dating, but I wanted to include them, which is why they are kind of at the end of six months. I'm planning on starting this on October 1st, so it would go, yeah, so April 1st, that'll be six months. So I have seven books here, because I think I did the math wrong on my thing. So I'm gonna tell you about the five in which that I'm actually going to do. So in October, I'm going to be reading 
All About Love by Bell Hooks. This is like fundamental reading that everyone talks about. In November, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus by John Gray. I do wonder how I'm going to feel about this book, but as I said before, I'm planning on discussing them on the channel, so. In December, I want to read The Darcy Myth by Rachel Fetter. So this book is actually kind of unique in that I really want to read Pride and Prejudice beforehand. I have not read Pride and Prejudice before. But so the tagline thing right here, it says, what if we've been reading Jane Austen all wrong? A funny, brainy, eye-opening take on how our contemporary love stories are actually pretty terrifying. And so it kind of talks about why we glorify shitty men and men's like poor behaviors. Um, cause I think Darcy is supposed to kind of, he's like not really like a cool person in Pride and Prejudice. I did listen to like the first hour of the audiobook, but I definitely need to go like find a copy of Pride and Prejudice so that I can read this book. In January, I have The End of Love by Tamara Tenenbaum. So this is actually a collection of like essays and stories about, you know, love in the 21st century. Um, I got this at Clevo Books in Cleveland, Ohio, just recently actually when I was there for work. And um, the guy who like is a manager at the shop, um, he was, him and I were talking a little bit about this book and he said that it was super, super good. Yeah, it's actually translated from Spanish. So I thought that that would be really cool. And then in February, I have The Ethical Slut by multiple authors. This is almost like a textbook, so I do wonder if I'm going to have to kind of like read this one in tandem with some of our other shorter books here, because like, I mean, it doesn't look that big, but this is like a big book compared to like this one, you know? Like this is a big boy. And this one talks about like ethical non-monogamy and different things like that. So um, it says the 20th anniversary edition of the classic guide to polyamory, open relationships, and finding freedom in sex and love. So I just, I don't know, polyamory I find very interesting. So I wanted to read that one. And then the optional last two. I think I want to see how the other books go and then maybe I can pick between one of these or if you want to leave a comment as we go through this. So obviously I will need a book for March and so the last two I have are The Beauty Myth by Naomi Wolf and The Body Keeps Score by what is it? Bessel van, van der Kolk. So these two very popular within like the nonfiction sphere. I've been wanting to read The Beauty Myth for a long time. A friend I had read this book and she said that it changed the way in which like she viewed herself, viewed the women around her, and that it was just like very, very eye-opening. So I really would like to read this one. I'm scared to read this book. <laughs> I know it like it says brain, my mind and body in the healing of trauma. <laughs> So I am a little bit scared to read this book. Sometimes heavy subject matter tends to get to me. But leave a comment below if you have any sort of strong feelings for one or the other. But that's like the book club aspect to it. And this video is coming out on Friday. I'm going to figure out like a set uploading schedule so that I can kind of keep myself on track for this like social experiment. Remember the first book that I'm going to be reading is All About Love by Bell Hooks. If you want to join me, I would love that. I could definitely like start a Discord or something. Let me know in the comments below if that's something that you'd be interested in. I think that's all I have for this video. This is like an intro type of video. Let me know if you guys have any like thoughts or you know things that maybe I should implement in the comments below. My big thing about this is like I just don't think we're meant to be going on this many dates in our lives. I know that dating apps really helped us feel like we were optimizing our chances, but at what cost, right? It's at the cost of our time and you know now all of these dating apps are kind of like a pay to play subscription or I guess the term that's been coined is freemium, which ew. <laughs> So I'm really excited to embark on this season of being really intentional with myself and my time. If you feel like joining me, please do leave a comment below. Subscribe to the channel to follow on this journey. Um, if you are just here for the crochet content, that's great too. I love having you here with me. Please like the video and I will see you guys next time.
Bye.